Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will talk about a very important concept of grouping and segmenting in Power BI. We will use various methods such as DAX. In DAX, you can use by creating a calculated column or you can create a measure for it. So I will explain you both of these methods and let you know which one is better, right? So first of all, what is grouping? Grouping is creating the segments of a particular column let's say you have a product cost right so let me just highlight this so if we have a product master right and for each product we have the product cost we can have product price right so if we have product cost ranging from 9.99 till let's say 13.99 right and you want to segment them on the basis of if my cost is between 9.99 and 13.99 so it should be a group of low and then if it is from 13.99 to 15.99 let's say it should be medium or mid and from 15.99 till 9 till the last value then it is my high right so if you have that kind of grouping you can use various methods such as you can use switch you can use if or nested if in a calculated column right so you can easily create a group I'll let you know the drawback of that as well now we will use a measure we will create a measure and create this kind of table where I can have group of high low mid and what is my quantity right so price group quantity I am getting for each grouping and for each group I am getting the uh, share like contribution and on that basis I can have my product wise quantity for each and every product and you can see this is my color coding for this particular group I am getting these products right so I can easily understand and visualize right so how to create this kind of table and how to analyze that right so the main objective of this video is to explain one DAX formula how to arrive on that particular formula and we don't have to you know go away from DAX because DAX is imperative it is very important to learn DAX if you are in a Power BI journey right so uh, this is my DAX that I will be working on and I'll explain you this looks complicated it looks tough because we are using calculate function then we are using filter we are using values then we are using count rows we are using again filter then we are using some uh, logical functions greater less than there are so many things in one particular DAX function uh, formula right so I'll explain you why because if you understand the logic you will easily understand and create your own DAX right alright guys so now we are on Power BI desktop right you can see we are on data view right now and there are multiple tables over here you can see there is one product table then sales table stores table right so right now for, for us product master and sales transaction table these two are important tables you can see product table is having product ID then product name and the category under which this particular product is coming then what is the cost of this product and what is the price of this product right now coming to sales table so in this sales table I have sales ID then date then store ID where the sales has happened then product ID the product ID right then number of units sold so this is my quantity so if I multiply this by price I can get the sales as well right so now my first step is to get this unit column in my product table so what I'll do is I'll use this product table as my main table and then use grouping over here right so let's create a column so there are multiple ways it's not like you have to follow this I'm just using this because I'm very comfortable in this particular concept calculate then I'll create sum then my table name is sales in sales I have a units column so I have to take some of all these units so I have to create a filter over here right so I'll create a filter on sales table on one particular key so what key binds these two table so the key is product underscore ID so product underscore ID of sales table should be equal to the product underscore ID of my products table whenever these two keys are equal then it should sum all the quantity and give me the value so I have to close this and close this again 
right so this is how it should look like right so we should always uh, take care of formatting so that we can understand what we are writing right so this is my quantity right so now if i filter for example product underscore id let's say i filter out my favorite number seven and quantity is 31588 now if you want to tally if you go to sales table and filter out for product id 7 you will see the quantity is cumulative of 31588 right so now we have the quantity column so now let's create one measure which will give me the quantity so i'm just creating this measure in in the product table itself uh, it doesn't matter right so i'm just typing quantity is equal to calculate sum of qty right so now this particular column is there with me as a measure so if i take a data card and search for quantity and select this i will get some particular value so if i go to value go to display units as none you'll get this is my total quantity right so now if I filter here particular product let's say product name and if I go with any particular product name my values will change right so this is fine now now we come to the question that we are trying to address in this video we have to create a group so that we can understand in which particular price for example, if we see the price range, it is going from 2.99 to 39.99. So what we have to do is we have to segment these values from 2.99 to 39.99 into three segments, low, mid, high, right? And then I have to get the total quantity in each group, right? So currently my total quantity is 1 million somewhere around, right? Total. So I want to see the bifurcation of 1 million from low mid high how much of 1 million I'm getting from low right so what I have to do is first of all I'll create a new table so I will enter data from here so you have to go to home tab and create this right so now this is my group low mid high let's say we take this I add a column this is my min and this is my max min should be zero let's say it is still 9.99 let's say it, it is from 9.99 to 19.99 and this is from 19.99 to let's say 49.99 we are taking extra buffer right so my table name is let's say price underscore group right so i have created a price underscore group table right so if I go back to my data view I can see this is my table created where I have three columns group min max if I go to my model view you can see it is over here right but I cannot make a relationship with my existing model because it doesn't have any date or it doesn't have any key with that can map to any other table right so what we have to do now we have to create a measure which can calculate through this particular table and products table and give me the values all right so let's create a price group quantity so what i'll do is i'll go to new measure right so this is the most important part of this video price group quantity all right so what I have to do is first I have to calculate right I have to calculate quantity that I have created this calculated measure right and then on what basis I want to filter filter what I have to filter values in my products table for all the values in product underscore price so product underscore price this so all the values it will filter right and what it will provide me so I'll just close the bracket and then comma now I want to count all the records whenever this value comes in the range 
of all those grouping that we have created right so what I'll do is filter filter on what price underscore group I want to filter this table right and what should be the logic the logic should be products price right because we are doing all the analysis on price it should be greater than or equal to right so it should be greater than equal to the groups minimum price group min right whenever it is greater than equal to min and so I have to apply and whenever the product underscore price of the products table is less than the max right whenever this is happening bracket closed and then bracket closed for count rows as well whenever this value is greater than zero then count right and then bracket closed so what this is doing is so now what I'm doing is I have to calculate the quantity right so ultimately what I have to do is whenever the particular pro value value coming from product price is in particular group maybe low mid or high then count that particular quantity similarly all those values it will accumulate and give me the total quantity for that particular group so I'll explain you it in a better way so let's first execute this and show you the results right so now this is executed so what I'll do is I'll just go quickly over here let me just delete this I don't need this uh, this is the table that has been created I'll create a group and then get the quantity over here right so this is how I am getting so total was 1 million right I wanted to see what is the contribution of high what is the contribution of low what is the contribution of mid I can easily see this now I want to see the percentage contribution I can add this again right so if you add this over the particular table let's say I want to add it again right so now show value as percentage of grand total right so now out of 100% high is giving me approximately 20% low is giving me around 35 and mid is around 45% so I am getting the maximum sum from the mid segment right so the be best part of this is you can easily filter out for example now you have to create a pie chart of this let's say you want to add a group and then you want to see the quantity so you can easily see right and if you filter it will work right so it's not like it is not interactive or something uh, let me just add one more thing let's say I add a let's say clustered bar chart right now if I add a group or let's say I want to see product wise performance right so let me add product underscore name and then the quantity right so I have all the products and their quantity now I want to make the colors different like for example if I have mid then the value sh should be mid so for that let me just add the grouping as well in the legends let's say I add this group in the legends so you can see the colors are changing now but you can see it is not uniform if I make it in a focus mode you can see some lines are coming from bottom some are mid some are high you can see it is not uniform colors are there that is great I can see the color birds is in the mid segment play-doh can is in the low segment I can see that but it is not uniform for that you don't have to use clustered bar chart you should use stacked bar chart so this is the difference if you click here see it works like charm right now the best part is if I filter out mid group I will get only the mid filters right so this is how it is working if I click on this I can see the contribution over here it is coming in the low segment right so it is very good it is dynamic you can easily change this formula so you can easily manipulate if you want to have it for multiple instances create a variable variable let's say group 1 equal to something right and this is how you can work uh, for uh, these particular things so this is totally dynamic 
right so now let me just explain you again yeah all right so now if i say my first value is okay uh, where did my formula go yeah let's say my first value is 15.99 right so 15.99 if you remember the table it will come in the mid group right 15.99 lies between 9.99 and 19.99 right so how this formula will calculate this so now this value 15.99 goes under this filter values of all the product underscore price so this is my product underscore price column all the values so value function will give me all the values from this particular column filter all these values count filter again the price group which the table i showed you right whenever the product price whenever this value 15.99 whenever it is greater than or equal to the minimum of price group and it is less than max so when i go back to the group 15.99 whenever it is greater than or equal to the min so min here is zero it is greater than or equal to this one right and this as well so these values are uh, valid and it should be less than the max so if i see it is not less than 9.99 because we are having the value 14.99 so this will not work if we go to mid 14.99 is less than 19.99 right so it will work so this will go into mid right now coming to the next step now because of this filter whenever the value so my count row is 1 and it is greater than 0 right if this is valid then calculate quantity right so for this 15.99 it will calculate this 57958 and other values quantity for 15.99 right similarly again it will be like iteration right whenever you have worked on for loop or any other loop right so this is like iteration now again it will check for the next value let let's say for 12.99 it will again see in which particular group it will come because of this filter right and then it will go for the next value so this is how it will parse all the values in this particular column and then it will give me the cumulative value in this particular quantity right so this is how i am getting this value so if you see for high i am getting this quantity for low i am getting this quantity for mid i am getting this quantity so it is very important to understand segmentation so that you can create the classification if you want to classify your distributors if you want to classify your retailers or your customers if you want to see which are my good customers in terms of the revenues that they are they are providing me on a monthly basis you want to cluster them on class a b c d you can do that right so this is a very powerful tool that you can leverage this looks slightly tricky if you are a beginner in power bi and you have not worked much on dax right so this might be tricky but uh, once you understand the logic this is very easy so uh, i understand if you don't grab it in a first way like you can pause the video just try to understand step by step if you still don't understand this you comment below right you mail me or we can connect and i can explain you in a much better way maybe so it depends so everything will come by practice right so this is something which i wanted to show you in this particular video second is i want to show you one more thing so if i go back to the products table uh, now going to the easier way right so let's uh, create a column and use if loop to create these uh, segmentations right so let's say i give the name group underscore one equal to if if my product underscore price is greater than equal to 0 and product underscore price is less than let's say 9.99 then give me low right else if my product underscore price is less than 19.99 then give me mid right else give me high right so this is how i am doing this so what i am doing here if this and this then give me low else if 
this is less than the give me mid else high right so you can see over here it has been classified into high low mid now again if I want to work on that for example I take a table I take group underscore one from here I take quantity right so you can see it is exactly matching 216078216078387570 everything is totally matching so why this fuss of creating so complicated DAX right so I did so easily I created a calculated column over here right so it was so easy right but uh, you should understand uh, we should not create calculated columns all the time I mean if you have no other choice then create calculated columns but in general the best practice is not to create calculated column because calculated columns in general are already stored in the memory and it will grab your space so let's say if you have 10 lakh of records 20 lakh of records so you are getting one more column for that but in this case if you're creating price group quantity this is my measure it is not storing anything so it is executing when it is being asked for right so this is one of the difference secondly this is totally dynamic so if you want to have uh, further drill down further uh, any segmentation you can easily create variables and create more complex uh, DAX right as I explained you before so this kind of uh, flexibility is not there in the calculated column right similarly you can use switch as well right so if you don't know about switch you can google and try to understand it's fairly easy if you still don't understand please let me know in the comments below I can explain you that as well right so these are the three methods switch and if third is the measure part that we uh, worked on so this is the best way to work on uh, any power bi project so if you're a beginner if you're creating simple projects so in that case uh, calculated columns will be very easy for you but if you go beyond and you work on very complex and long uh, data sets then large data sets then uh, this kind of DAX you have to work on right so I hope you understand the difference I hope you understand how to build the logic and create the DAX right anything uh, related to DAX uh, let me know because this is one of the most important concept for Power BI developers right so just don't go for drag and drop and you're happy with visualizations I can see there are so many workshops going on when uh, influencers are sharing for 49 rupees you are just understanding and learning everything but that is just one step this is great you go for any workshop uh, you try to understand how to visualize things but the next step is data modeling working on DAX that is something that will give you a slight advantage from others right so all right guys i hope this video was really helpful for you and if you have any uh, doubt please let me know thanks a lot for watching